Boys and girls, a library story I borrowed for you is called Elmer and the Monster. It was written by David McKee, just like the other Elmer stories. And because it's a library book, McKee is in the shelf with all the other M's because that's on its spine. We see Elmer back here with his friends and they're around a tree. I wonder why they're so afraid of the monster. Granny's monster was pretty fierce yesterday if you heard that story. Our title page has Elmer with his friends. They're all cowering. Elmer, the patchwork elephant, had just started his morning walk when he heard a terrible roar. Look out, Elmer. The birds and small creatures called as they came hurrying past him. There's a monster. <gasps> a monster, thought Elmer. Really? And he continued his walk. A little while later, there was another roar. Don't go that way, Elmer, says the monkeys, swinging through the trees. There's a monster. And then they were gone again. Hmm, a monster again, says Elmer. That's very interesting. Not before long, there was a third roar. Was that your roaring tiger, asked Elmer, as Tiger raced toward him? Certainly not. That was a monster, said Tiger. And he disappeared into the jungle. Fascinating, murmured Elmer. And he went on his way. When the next roar came, Elmer was ready for it. Was that a monster? Elmer called out to the crocodiles and they fled past. Yes, a pretty monstrous one by the sound of it, said the crocodiles. Turn back, Elmer. Or go on carefully, Elmer said to himself. So he did. Do you have an idea about what the monster might be like and why Elmer can be so brave and keep going? Soon after that, there was another huge roar and a lion ran by. Nice roar, a lion, says Elmer. Uh-uh, wouldn't me, says lion. Now that was the roar of a decent-sized monster. I'm off to see where everyone's gone, he explained, and he ran off. Well, almost at once, another roar split in the air. Come with us, Elmer, called the elephants, and they stampeded past. There's a monster. I have never seen a monster, said Elmer. Well, you don't have to see it. Just imagining it is horrible enough, said an elephant as he vanished with the others. Elmer walked on. The next roar was very close. It shook the trees and it sent leaves flying. Cautiously, Elmer moved forward, ready to flee at any moment. He peeped through the trees and then he pushed himself through a clearing. There, on a rock, sat a furry creature in tears. Hello, said Elmer. Did you hear that roar? That was me, sobbed the creature. I do that when I'm frightened. Well, why are you frightened, asked Elmer. I'm just passing through on my way home, sniffed the blue animal. But I keep hearing monsters. Come with me, said Elmer. I'll look after you. And riding on Elmer's back, the furry creature chatted happily until they reached the other animals. Hello, Elmer, said the elephant. Thank goodness you're safe. Who's your friend? Did you save him from the monster? This is Blue Blue, said Elmer. Go on, Blue Blue, show them. And Blue Blue opened his mouth and a roar came out. Oh, the animals almost jumped out of their skins in shock. Friendly furry Blue Blue is the monster you've been frightened of, said Elmer, and he started laughing. And those friendly fellows, Blue Blue, are the monsters you were frightened of. You've been rather silly, but it's quite funny, really. So, laughing at their own silliness, and sometimes whispering boo to each other, the animals happily accompanied the monster Blue Blue on his way. And that's the end of this Elmer story. The last word we hear is the one that Blue Blue said. It was a roar. It starts and it ends with the same letter R. And what you see here is how the librarian checked it out so that I could borrow it to read it to you. There will be more Elmer adventures, so stay tuned.